In this edition of Uptown, we give you the results of the student elections. We take a look at the events of Greek Week, and we will show you how the UC dance team prepare for international competition. All this and more, coming up on Uptown. Hello and welcome to Uptown, a production of the Electronic Media Division at the University of Cincinnati. I'm Sarah Kaniga. And I'm David Harding. The votes have been counted and the results are in. The University of Cincinnati student body has selected Tim Lawley to be their student government president next year. Lawley will be joined by Vice President-elect Doug Ely in the fall when they start their term in office. Close to 8,000 students voted in this year's election, with 51% of the vote going to Lawley and Ely. They beat out Ryan Ponsler and Leif Edger by just over 1,000 votes. All the candidates are currently serving in the student government and look to continue the work that is already underway. Nearing graduation season, you may think students have future plans in mind. Yet with the, with the economic situation this spring, some students are having difficulty finding jobs. With the economic recession, many college students are worried about finding a job as graduation approaches. However, one August graduate, Jonathan Bechuga, has already landed a job at 700 WLW. So I started talking primarily with Sherry Rowland, who's our promotions director. And I would always bug her, hey, are there any internships? Because I know how important that is to get involved in the industry. And she said, no, but then I kept bugging her and bugging her. And finally, she's like, all right, send me your resume, and I'll see what's up. So there was nothing available at that time. So then she forwarded my resume on to Mo Egger, who was looking for an intern just for his show, which was something he was starting brand new. And I interviewed with him, got it set up. Internship went really well. I got some really good reviews, and they had a producer spot open, so they hired me on. Jonathan is fortunate since unemployment for young bachelor degree holders is expected to rise at just over 4%. With this in mind, some students have decided to put their future careers on hold. So I'm taking a year off, and uh, you know, in part because in Cincinnati, there are only a couple of newspapers to even pick from, and the most sought after job right now is like working at the Inquirer or something like that and you know out of 200 journalism students many of them do you think are going to get a gig working at the Inquirer even um, you know it's just few and far between people actually getting a job and, and the career that they're looking for and according to the University of Cincinnati Career Center available jobs for the class of 2009 is considerably below the previous five graduating classes well, it's just going to take a lot more work to find work. You know, finding a job is a full-time job in itself, and you, students would really have to apply themselves more. Like I was saying to you earlier, uh, generally the unemployment rate is around um, 8%, and in some states it's as high as 12%, and we haven't seen those kind of unemployment figures, uh, those double-digit figures, since about 1983. We are here at Marchant Stadium for tonight's collegiate baseball. Few UC grads are going to be as lucky as Jonathan, but at least they know they're not the only one having trouble on the job hunt. Travis Holmes, the weather outside here. Is we are sorry to report that the following that following the taping of the interview, Jonathan Machuga was let go from Clear Channel in their latest round of layoffs. So he's in the same boat now as so many other new grads. Each college at UC has a counselor for career development. If you are interested in finding help, the Career Development Center is located on the first floor of the University Pavilion at UC's West Campus. The economic downturn is affecting higher education too, of course. UC's interim president, Monica Ramai, also serves as senior vice president for administration and finance. Ramai and a team have been looking closely at UC's academic programs as part of the Collegiate Restructuring Initiative. She said there are more than 500 academic programs here, and that's too many. Uptown asked Ramai if cuts could be made before a new president is hired. It could. It could happen. Um, I, I don't know for sure because the process needs to work its, its way out. Ultimately, these kinds of issues are always brought to our board of trustees, so they're the final decision maker. But it's very possible because the the commitment that I've made to the board as the interim and really the reason that they asked me to do this job on an interim basis was to make sure that we're not using this this period of transition to sort of give ourselves a vacation the work continues right. uh, and that's all part of this concept of maintaining the momentum so if 
uh, the process unfolds, the programs are ready for us to make a decision on, we will make the decision. The restructuring initiative is led by the provost office. The University of Cincinnati is also under another kind of review. Representatives of the North Central Association of Colleges were on the campus in late April for UC's reaccreditation. The process takes place every 10 years. This time around, UC has higher enrollment, updated facilities, and a higher graduation rate than administrators hope will help in the reaccreditation process. The, re the reviewers will release their report any in any successions suggestions for improvement this summer. Perhaps the most important part of the university is the faculty. We know UC has many great teachers, but Uptown's Kim Shoup is tasting a closer look at some of the professors in her classroom series, Beyond the Classroom. History of theater classes, but beyond the classroom, he is actively involved in showbiz. In my opinion, anyone who lives within five miles of the Delta ought to evacuate immediately. Sasha Binder, it's been, I'm afraid I have some bad news. Professor Pavlovich has been involved with theater for over 30 years. Even though he has a degree in broadcast journalism, he still follows his true passion of acting. I'm at a point in my life where I'm only going to do what I enjoy doing. Um, I've resigned myself that I'm not going to be a rich person financially. And that kind of frees me up to not have to face the money. Professor Pavlovich is more commonly known to his students as Bob. He is admired for his passion and enthusiasm for the creative arts. Being a professor, his top priorities are not only to teach students material, but help them to pursue their dreams. Uh, I really enjoy teaching the classes. I am, enjoy sharing with the students. I very often learn as much from them as they learn from me. And I think his teaching ability is just amazing. He he interacts with the students and he makes them want to know the information uh, that he is giving. Professor Pavlovich is a role model to many students, not only in, but outside of the classroom. This is Kim Shoup reporting for Uptown. The Greek community is always giving time and money to various charities. Once a year, all the fraternities and sororities get together for one large fundraiser for a specific charity. Uptown reporter Alex Doyle went to find out how the Greeks were having a week of fun while raising funds. If it's spring quarter and the Greek community is stomping, lip syncing, and dancing for charity, then it must be Greek week. Every year the Greek community at UC comes together to raise money for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Make-A-Wish and UC's Greek community raise tens of thousands of dollars every year to send five terminally ill children to Disney World. Wayne and Garth, the Spice Girls, the Ninja Turtles, and dozens more participated in the 90s themed fundraiser this year. Judges included everyone from head baseball coach Brian Cleary and the original Uncle Woody to UC faculty members and Greek life directors. But no matter who the judges voted for, everyone supports the cause. It's an awesome cause because we always have a set amount and I'm pretty sure we're raising more than we were last year. The whole week is filled with both day and nighttime events like the dunking booth and God and Goddess, but everyone has their favorites. Uh, my part of Greek Queen has actually been all the setup, uh, getting ready for these events. Um, it really lets you get closer with you know your brothers and you know, everyone in Greek life. So it's really been a good way of getting close with everyone within my own chapter. Um, and then getting up here and putting on a good show. It's been a great time and I've enjoyed every minute of it. Greek Week is the one time of year when the entire Greek community unites for one cause. They may be competing against each other, but in the end, all the money goes to the same charity. Greek Week set a goal of $36,000 this year, and the goal seems to get more ambitious each year. Next year, the Greek community hopes to raise even more money. This is Alex Doyle reporting for Uptown. Greek Week, Greek week raised $38,000 for the Make-A-Wish Foundation.